Hello and welcome to this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Today is going to be the finale of season three. For anybody that's not familiar with Sue the Milwaukee Road, we cover a lot of different things from decoder installs to weathering to modeling, which the majority of the stuff I've been doing as of late has been modeling, as well as 187 scale cars. We also jump over and take a look at the GN in 1970, which is my dad's railroad. 70. Now with all that said, if you are new, hit subscribe and hit that bell. That'll just give you an indication as to when a new episode has actually been aired, which generally is around Fridays at noon central time. I string together about 10 episodes for each season and we cover just a wide gamut of things. And we're wrapping up season three here and what I'm actually gonna cover is the railroad itself. You're gonna look at where the railroad is at. I need to get the rooms done, I need to do the electrical, the drywall, and all that stuff that went into actually finishing the space. And now that it's close, one of the rooms is ready to actually get the railroad installed. I got a few other elements that I'm gonna tie in in that particular place, but you're gonna see how the research is done as well as taking a look at the track plan that I'm gonna be working with. So hopefully you enjoy this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. All right, answering that age-old question of where do you start? The beginning. In this case, I'm going to start by keeping it simple. I think he called us stupid. I'm not going to dive into too many details. I want to try to keep this as straightforward as possible. For you guys that are starting out, the first thing I dove into was location. I wanted to determine exactly what I was going to model, and then I determined what road. I picked uh, Minneapolis because that's actually kind of around the area where I grew up. Minneapolis to South St. Paul. It's a fairly short stretch, and at least it's somewhat manageable in terms of research. Where do you get your research? I end up going through books. I go through magazines i end up finding a map of the location which i found on the minnesota department of transportation and that's something that i can dive into whoa, whoa, whoa. can we see the map sure we're going to take a real quick look at the actual track plan itself and uh, this is the high watt the elevated district left to right on your screen is actually north and south in the actual uh, the map so it's turned counterclockwise 90 degrees but what we're going to look at here is actually just compression. You can see all the track work as well as all the buildings that are involved. I'm just going to select a few elements that I like. Like I picked L.S. Donaldson uh, Company, the warehouse. I have uh, the elevators of Cargill. Um, I believe I also have ADM mixed in. Um, but what we're looking at here is just being able to compress all this stuff and find elements we like. Now, an example of a unique element is actually this crossover here right in the center of the screen. Um, that's just a cool element that I like, how you're accessing those industries. And I'm going to add that just because it's a unique element. Instead of dialing into all the different details that you're seeing on the actual track plan, we're going to jump into the XTrackCAD just to give you a look at what we're doing. All right, it's time to test that knowledge. Which of these was not in Sioux, Milwaukee Maintenance of Way Service? Was it A, the Wrecker Derrick? B, the Jordan Spreader? C, the Snow Flanger? D, the Cut Widener? Or E, the Paddle Auger? We'll find out later in this episode. Or does it come up with these questions? It's time to paint the M&S decks brown. I'm using Rail Tie Brown. We'll let this dry, and then we're going to move on to decals. Ooh. Here's a 10-second tip. How do you maintain your paintbrushes? Well, you use a little Dawn dish soap in the palm of your hand, work it in a figure-eight pattern to be able to clean the bristles nice and clean for future projects to come. I had Bill Brillinger print me up another nice custom set of decals. I believe it's decals. The m &S flat car is on its way. I use Solvacet to be able to set the decals themselves. I let everything dry, and then I move on to weathering. But before we do, we're going to jump back over to X-TrackCAD. <laughs> All right, we've opened up X Track CAD, and I don't want to overwhelm everybody because we've probably already overwhelmed most of you by the fact that we opened up a uh, design software that we're going to actually lay a railroad out in. Uh, yeah? I want to give you just the real basic, simple things that you can do to be able to at least maybe lay something out and give yourself an idea of what you're working with. What I've got here is a blank slate, so if I, uh, I'm just going to pull up real quick and show you how to lay out a yard ladder. In this particular case, I grabbed an Atlas turnout. There's preloaded turnouts that can be found all the way across here, uh, and they are actually loaded into the system by going to parameters. You can go in and hit browse. You can go down and select your favorite manufacturer, whether it's Walther's or Pico or whoever you use. You're able to pull that from this list and be able to use them on this particular application. So as you can see here, I've got a few of them already preloaded. I've got an Atlas turnout. I want to show you real quickly how you can lay out a yard. You hear that, Marge? This guy's full of jokes. He thinks he can quickly lay out a yard. <laughs> I'm going to grab a, a right hand since I lay a left hand down. I'm holding this particular turnout out here, and I can actually snap it onto the turnout itself, depending on what direction I want it to go. And once I've got it where I like it, I hit Enter. If I want to add another turnout, I can go to the end of the turnout, and I can just click on it, hit Enter, click on it, hit enter. Now you've added multiple turnouts. If you want to modify the tracks, you can just simply right click, go down to modify, 
and pull out the track. Now that we've got all the tracks pulled out here, I'm going to actually just lay one more straight piece just alongside these other ones and show you how you can auto connect tracks together. You go to the top toolbar, click join two tracks, click one, you click the other, and as you can see these two have adjoined. If I want to add a 36 inch radius, there are different radiuses located across the top here as well. You can simply just lay a 36 inch radius out here, I hit enter, click on the end of the track, hit enter, click on the end of the track, hit enter. Now you can see we've got 90 degrees three pieces of flex track that's going to give us this curvature that is what is nice about using the actual system itself is to be able to learn what is too sharp what is too broad what are the what's the spacing how are the turnouts going to lay out if you sketch it out you might have too small a turnouts or too large or however it might be this is just a simple way to do it the other thing that i really like is if i go up to manage parts list here it's giving me a list. I need one atlas left hand. I need three atlas right hands, number sixes. There's a section of nine inch straight, but then there's also a Shinohara Code 83, 36 inch, three sections of um, that particular track. And this is just giving you the ability to be able to create a parts list. You have a blueprint. You've got an idea what you're working with, and you're able to then go shopping from there. All right, if you made your selection for which of these was not a Sue Milwaukee Road maintenance of way item, it was E, the Paddlocker. X-1500 was a one-of-a-kind snowblower on the Great Northern. It had a unique retractable paddle head and literally augured through the most dense snowdrifts. However, as cool as it looks, it was never called the paddle auger. Now I've opened up the Hiawatha Elevator District as far as the uh, the layout my, that I've done. As you can see here, I had that select compression and the Minneapolis Seed Company here is uh, along the wall and I've actually worked in a few other industries as well. This is generally what I'm going to be shooting for. It lets me know kind of the curvature of this particular uh, track going through the corner. And if I ever want to test this out, they do have a system that you can actually click on here and it lets you run trains where you can just drop in a couple of uh, locomotives. You could throw a couple of freight cars on here. As you can see here, now I'm running the system. This will let you see if your actual track plan works well. You can put in 60 foot, 40 foot boxcars, whatever it is that you might want to have. You hold down the shift key and that actually throws turnouts for you. So I'm going to throw a couple of turnouts here. We're going to reverse and back up to grab that one car that I set in the back here. That number two car, as I back up, I can speed this thing up just so we can move along faster. And there you have it. One way to test your uh, system is to be able to set up a program like this and be able to try out how the track work works by actually running a train. So hopefully you enjoyed this little tutorial on how X-TrackCAD works, and uh, you'll get your railroad planned out and started soon. All right, one of my favorite things is actually checking out Mr. Tom Klamoski's Georgia Northeastern Model Railroad. It is so cool to see how much this guy gets into such a small space. If you're not familiar with Tom's work, you can find his work on YouTube, but he's also appeared in Model Railroader. And as you can see on his track plan here, he uses his space well. I'm working in a 10 by 12 space. He's got about a 10 by 9, and it's very cool to see the work that he's able to create in such a small space. And it's without question, he's one of the most inspirational modelers for myself to be able to look at the work that he's doing and seeing what he's working with that space that he's got so that is definitely my goal in the direction as far as my railroad is concerned to be able to have this kind of detail in this kind of space one of the cool things i like about his youtube videos is that he actually treats them like we're watching actual prototype railroading and i'm talking about taking breaks and time down to be able to hook up the air or disconnect the air or whatever it might be but he gives a little narration across the bottom of the screen that tells you what's going on in the scene. Why are we waiting here? But if you're using your imagination, normally you'd be thinking these things through your mind, which I'm sure Tom does. This is just giving a viewer a nice way to kick back, relax, and do a little rail fanning. So I'm going to let you do the same.
I could easily let the remainder of this video roll, but we're going to pop over and check out where the Hiawatha Elevator District is heading. Thanks for the inspiration, Tom. go that's what we're talking about a little rail guitar action well as you can see this is the Hiawatha elevator district and uh, the process has been in progress I'm working on getting the uh, the actual bench work for underneath this done but I did this ahead of time now we ended up putting those together ahead of time because I knew that the bench work wasn't going to be done in the actual room itself that's one way to accelerate the process something like this you could easily slide under a bed or under a couch or somewhere else around your home so you can actually lay track but not actually have the railroad started if that makes any sense. I did the planning itself on X TrackCAD. Once I had a pretty good game plan together I laid these out. I've got two sections as well as the corner section and I'm going to be able to then go into the actual room and get most of that stuff squared away. I've got some painting yet to do. I've got to actually finish up the actual bottom what will be the bench work but it's going to be bookcases or some shelves. They'll get attached to the walls. They've got to get painted into a kind of a cream color but that's finishing the space itself getting it close to having these pieces dropped in. And once we're able to get to that point, we're gonna be able to drop in some DCC and start running some locomotives. So that's one way to be able to do it. The shelf layout that literally you just build the shelf. It's not too difficult. All right, there are 101 million ways to be able to weather a freight car. 101 million, that's a lot. All right, maybe not 101 million, but this is the way I go about it. I use Doc O'Brien's weathering chocks, and one thing I think a lot of times people run into is they're intimidated to weather a car. And yeah, so you might custom paint a car, you custom decal it, you get the whole thing done, and then you go and F it up with a bunch of chalk you smear all over it. What's f up? And how I prevent that is working from photographs. You look at a photograph and it'll give you a pretty good indication as to what that car actually looks like. And subtlety, subtlety, subtlety. You notice how subtle I'm actually being with applying the chalk itself? Well, until I put this rust on. I end up bringing it back though. And the way I bring stuff back is in two ways. I wipe it off with either my finger or I end up bringing it back using an eraser. And I feel like chalks are such a forgiving medium because as you can see here, I'm actually going to pull in the eraser right in here. And I'm doing that to be able to make the lube plates look like they're new as well as make a couple of patches on the car. Now we're going to move on to the top deck and you're going to notice that I go on very heavy with even some of that light yellow. But what I'm going to do again is what? Yeah, I'm going to bring it back. You can always have that give and take back and forth until you find a good look that you like. Now there's the eraser that I'm using and as you know I'm using it to knock this thing back. I'm just bringing back some of the highlights and actually can give myself a little harder edge on some of those yellow boards. And here's the final result. So don't be intimidated. Just remember, subtlety can go a long way. All right, we're finally done talking about it. Let's go in and check out the actual space where the Hiawatha Elevator District will be born. It's got a little bit yet to go, but we're finally getting to that point. We can finally start to get the actual track work laid. All right, the track work's laid, but we're able to actually implement it, get it in its space, find out what this thing is going to look like, because it can't sit on the shelf forever. It's nice to be able to dust this thing off and get a feel for what it's going to be like in its natural habitat. We've got the track work obviously down. We've got to be able to refine it. It's not all nailed down. It's just tacked down. We've mocked it up. We're getting a feel for the space. It's at this point I can't wait to see a locomotive roll into the end of the line. And this isn't the end of the actual railroad. It's just the beginning. Oh boy, that was cheesy. All right, here's the curmudgeon coming at you for the wrap of the week. This week we're talking about operations, and no, we're not talking about getting under the knife. We're talking about rolling the rails with some purpose. I tell you that now, there's a lot of people out there that are like, I don't like operations, I'm scared of operations, I'm afraid that things are going downhill. Well, let me tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with operations, you just gotta find the right style. There are a lot of options out there, JMRI, the car card system, the switch list. There's all kinds of options that are out there. But find one that's fun and find one that you enjoy. Because I tell you what, right now, it gives your railroad a purpose. And that's it for the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. I don't like operations. I'm scared of operations. I'm afraid that things are going downhill. <laughs> Be sure and hit the like button. You can click here to subscribe. You can also check out other episodes of Soothe the Milwaukee Road, as well as take the tour of the GN in 1970.